Hello one and all and welcome to this month's edition of the Discipleship Forum program hosted by MFM Jesus House New York. This is a platform where we discuss real world events, trends and circumstances in the place of believers in this generation. Before we get started, we would like to thank God for the salvation of our souls and the opportunity to know him. We thank God for the many leaders he continually uses for us, such as the general overseer of this ministry, the regional overseer, and the mother of Israel of our ministry. We pray the Lord's mighty hand will continue to strengthen them to do the good work of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's bow down our heads and take a quick prayer before we start. Lord, we thank you so much for the privilege and opportunity to be in your presence today and to discuss this topic. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will impart upon us knowledge and information to be able to grow in our Christian life. And we pray that everything that you tell us today, that we'll open our hearts to it and put it into practice. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, this is the Discipleship Forum. I'm your host, Sister Joy. And today I have with me six lovely panelists in the persons of Sister Oluwatosin. Grateful to be here. Brother Adeboye. Thank you for having me. Sister Agochi. Thank you for having me. Sister Bukola. My pleasure being here. Sister Francisca. Thank you for having me. And Brother Arewale. Thank you for this opportunity. The topic of today's Discipleship Forum is, should Christians pay tithes or is that out of date? So let's start this discussion by first defining what exactly does it mean to pay tithe and then reviewing a key verse. So what is tithing? In simple words, to tithe means to give one-tenth of our salary to the church. Our key verse is taken from Leviticus 2730, specifically the Living Bible or TLB version states, a tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain or fruit, is the Lord's and is holy. Now, I invite our panelists to share their view on this topic with any or all of these guiding questions. One, what is the Bible's view and standards on tithing? Two, can we compare taxes to paying tithes? And three, what is the impact of tithing on a believer's life? Feel free to share personal experiences. Let's first please have Sister Olua Tosin share with her views on this topic. Thank you for having me once again. In various versions of our keepers, such as KJV, NLT, Amplify, the word tithe is used interchangeably with the words tithe, tenth, or one-tenth of. This implies that one-tenth of the things we earn or labor for belong to the Lord. So the system of giving our tithes and offerings is a way to acknowledge that all of our fruitfulness, income, salary, earnings were given to us by God. But how can we be sure that we have benefits or obligations to paying our tithes as believers? How can we be sure whether God minds if we pay one-tenth of anything? How can we be sure that we're supposed to bring them to the church? Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 to 11 explains that God wants tithes and offerings to be brought to his house, the church, so that there will be food in his house. That's right, food and resources that will further kingdom work through building projects, the upkeep of his servants, evangelism outreaches, and much more. God also promised to rebuke devourers for our sake and ensure that our vine does not fail to bear fruit in the fields. Your vine can be likened to your occupation or business in any field or industry. Similar to how people ask you, what is your field of expertise or practice? Finally, part of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. More than our obligation, it is an honor to finance the kingdom of God here on earth out of the abundance that the Lord has blessed us with. Thanks again for having me. Thank you so much, Sister Oluwa Tosin, for sharing with us your views on this topic. Let's kindly now have Brother Adebaye give us some insight on this interesting topic. Thank you once again for having me. Should the Christian pay tithes? Yes, the Christian should pay tithes. This is the commandment of God to us. In Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, that says, All the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's, and it is holy unto the Lord. Looking at the view of the Bible on this topic, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, God said, After bringing our tithe to the storehouse, we should prove him 
if he will not open the windows of heaven unto the titans. Meaning, the Lord is doing his own part, but many of us, we are not doing our own part by paying our tithes. Can we compare paying tax to paying tithes? Even though government expects us to pay our taxes, to run their programs, the benefit accrues to, to the believers when they pay their tithes are far more than what we are going to gain from the government. And lastly, on the impact of tithe to the believers. The tithing of a believer ranging from spiritual benefit, from blessing we receive, from absence of the volatile, good, sound, and unimaginable increase, and safety we enjoy on daily basis are far, far more than what we can gain from paying our taxes. So I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to faithfully pay our tithe in order to continually receive the blessing of the Lord. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Brother Adebaye, for sharing with us your views on this topic. Let's kindly now have Sister Ogochi share with us her views on this topic. Thank you for this great opportunity. Yeah, this question of is tithe in part of debt or should Christian pay tithe? I strongly believe that Christians should pay their tithe because it's God's command. And it's stated in Malachi 3.10, bring ye all your tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. God's word can never be updated. What is the Bible view of tax and tithing? Bible exhorts all believers to give tithes. It's part of our spiritual worship and biblical publication. Just as it stated in Malachi 3, 8 to 12, God is warning believers to stop robbing him by bringing our tithes to God into his house, then and proving him whether he will not enrich our cause. Also, Proverbs 3, 9 encourages us to honor God with our resources. God wants us to use all our resources, including our time, our talent, and our money for his glory. Giving back to God 10% of our income is by legal obligation to all Christians. And also, the question of should we compare paying tasks to tithe can never be the same. Although the government expects us to pay tasks, it cannot be compared to tithing because Thus, we only return what we have paid or even any less. But, however, tithing will bring greater benefit to the giver, causing open heaven to release blessing to the tither with assurance to preserve it. What is the impact of tithing on the believer's life? One of the irreversible law of receiving tangible blessing from God is the law of tithing. There is nothing so supernatural about tithing but as believers who faithfully pay his or her tithe always receive great reward. There are many promises attached to tithing. God promised to open heaven, rebook the vara, and also make nation to favor us and bless us in Malachi 3, 10 to 12. Do you want to be, receive God's assurance of that shall not lack? Pay your tithe. Definitely you will do. May God bless us. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Sister Ugochi, for sharing with us your views on this topic. Let's kindly now have Sister Bukola give to us her insight and views on this controversial topic. As Christian, we have wealth in our redemption package. Revelation 5.12 says it all. And how do we assess this wealth? We need to do this covenant practice, which is tithing and offering. Whatever you give, either tithes, either offering, prayers, or singing in the church brings returns, but tithes secures. Let's look into the life of Jesse Penny. Jesse Penny was a tither, later he stopped tithing, and late, when he stopped tithing, his business runs down, and when he noticed that his business runs down, he went back to tithing, and then his business run, uh, comes up again, so that secures his business. So tight secures. If you do not be involved, God will not be committed to it. You have to play your part so that God is committed to it. God is not a respecter of man. 
Malachi 3.10b says that we open the heaven, uh, windows of heaven so that the blessing shall be more, that we will not be have room to contain it. So I'm saying that you cannot compare taxes to, to tithes because tithes is commandment from God and taxes is from mere mortal body, laws and rules that we obey. But this is of God. And we have to give God what is God's own. So lastly, I will conclude by saying as Christian, if you do not return to God through your tithe and offering in order to make things work for you, God will not, may not restore a lot of things. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Sister Bukola, for sharing with us your opinions and view on this controversial topic. Now let's have Sister Francisca give us some insights. Thank you for having me again. I will start by saying, tight is a tent. It's biblical and it is a command from God. All throughout the Old Testament, it's commanded that they should give their tight. And it is being practiced, it's a custom practice by the men of faith, men and women of faith. And in the New Testament, throughout the New Testament, yes, it was not commanded, but if we read all through the New Testament, we will find out that it is commanded as a Christian, we should share and give out of all what we have been blessed with. If we read throughout 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it summarizes everything, which says, according to what your heart had decided, give unto God willingly, without grumble and without anybody forcing you, because God blesses a cheerful giver. Tax and tight payment are not the same. You pay tax, it's an obligation with no blessing, but with tight is a commandment from God. It is directed by the Holy Spirit and you are blessed with it. Paying tithe has a positive impact on Christians, which one of them is the countless blessings we enjoy. We as Christians, then we are obedient and faithful to its word. It also helps to spread the gospel. In conclusion, I will say, give unto God what is due unto him. If you want to enjoy Abraham's blessings, pay your tithe, pay your offerings regularly. You cannot beat God in giving. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Francisca, for giving us some insight on this topic. Last but not least, let's have Brother Adewale share with us his views on this interesting topic. Thank you. The principle of tithes and offering is God's way of generating revenue and providing for the needs of the church and the ordained ministers of God. Just like the government of this world generates income through taxes to run government affairs and to meet the needs of the communities, protecting lives and properties. Human brain or carnal mind cannot explain or define Titan offering because they are things of God's spirit. The concept of Titan offering is older than the Old Testament. The concept of Titan offering is older than the Old Testament. And this is what those overeducated Confucianists on social media do not know. The reason why believers must faithfully practice tithe and offering is not because of the Old Testament. The Old Testament provides lessons and manual, but the concept is older than the Old Testament instructions. Where was the Old Testament when Abraham paid tithe in Genesis 14:20? The reason why believers must faithfully practice tithe and offering in the order of Abraham, the father of faith, is because it is the perfect will of God and the work of faith. Believers must do the work of faith to make heaven. Faith without work is a dead faith. Believers who are not faithful in the tithe and offering are subjecting the church and the ministers of God to financial hardship. They have serious case with God. The judgment is in the book of Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 46. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Every believer will be subjected to this message on judgment day. I encourage those brethren to repent and ask for grace to do the works of Abraham for the sake of eternity. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Brother Adewale, for that response, and all our lovely panelists for sharing with us these key insights and knowledge on this introverse, interesting topic. Now let's break this down a bit and see what really is the big deal with tithing. Well, tithing is a way to express our faithfulness to God in good times and in bad times. Tithing should not be a problem for us Christians because we're basically returning to God what he gave to us. God willingly and undeservingly gave us everything, gave us the whole earth, in fact, his only son, so we wouldn't die, but have eternal life. Why should it be a problem to give part of what he has given to us to him through tithing? When one refuses to tithe, they re reap the consequences by having the devourer enter their finances, and what they could have been paying in tithes ends up being overpaid in hospital bills, car mechanic bills, home repairs, and more. But many times the devil doesn't allow us to see this. One would just think, my money never stays. In reality, this is the spirit of the devourer that has entered one's finances, also known as the spirits of pocket with holes, a part of the curse that enters one's life as a result of one being unfaithful in tithing. Tithing also helps one in their spiritual life by keeping them accountable to God. In fact, tithing is one of the easiest ways to measure your faith in God and spiritual maturity. In the New Testament, Acts chapter 5, the believers were so fervent for God and spiritually mature that they were even selling their own property to give to the kingdom work. It was the spiritually immature ones, Ananias and Sapphira, that decided to lie about their faithfulness, claiming they were giving God all they earned from selling when that was not true. Beloved, we may feed the poor, we may speak in tongues, we may be able to fast for 70 days. We may cast out demons, but can we follow one of the most clearly outlined rules in the Holy Bible? Can we pay our tithes? Can we pay them faithfully? In Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 13, Jesus tells us what? He told the man who came to him, claiming that he had done all to make the kingdom of God, to do what? To sell his possessions. Right now, however, God is not asking us to sell all our possessions. Rather, he's asking us just to pay 10% of our salary, of what we earn to help with the cost of carrying out the gospel. If we will not dare to forget to pay our taxes for the fear of IRS knocking at our door, why do we play with things that can lead to even more dangerous consequences, specifically eternal destruction? The Bible says, do not fear man, but rather fear God, which can destroy both the body and the soul. I'm not saying we should not pay our taxes, but how you treat your money in the physical world, do even better. In fact, the best with your money when it comes to spiritual things. Psalm 126 tells us those who sow in tears will reap in joy. So let's please open our hearts and thus open our pockets to the words God has for us today and dust the divine grace to give as we should and give, get the immeasurable blessings that come with this will return to all of us in Jesus' name. Once again, this was the Discipleship Forum. I'm your host, Sister Joy, and we'll see you next time by God's grace. Uh-huh.